As you probably already know, something that is super important for time management and productivity without exploiting yourself is morning rituals, taking the time in the morning to spend with yourself, with your thoughts, with your feelings. And if you've ever struggled with putting a morning routine into practice and actually following through with it, hello, me. You'll want to watch this expert interview because Jen and I talk all about how to implement a morning routine, but do it with grace, with imperfection, with compassion. And she shares with us the five most important rituals that we need to have in our lives. Jen is a motivational speaker and healthy habits coach. She helps women find bliss and happiness within their bodies today before even reaching their ideal weight. She helps with meal planning, exercise, accountability, and body image boosting. Hit the like button below if you are excited to learn more about morning rituals. Welcome to the show, Jen. I'm so excited to have you here today. I would love for you to just tell us a little bit about you and your business. Hi, Becca. Thank you for having me today. It's such an honor to meet you and learn more about you and your audience. My name is Jen, and my last name is super long. It's Espinosa Goswami. And uh, so I'm a Hispanic girl who um, married an Indian guy, and we have a lot of fun things going on in our household. You know, we've got mixed religions, we've got lots of fun cooking going on in my house. I actually am a health and wellness coach and a motivational speaker. So I came to this journey completely by accident. I grew up as a morbidly obese kid, which means that medically I was 100 pounds over my ideal body weight as a young child. And um, that might have been something that represented a challenge for me, but I was physically mostly healthy. And I had a great family. I had great connections with my friends. I did really well in school. So I never thought like it set me back at all. The only times it really set me back was when um, I couldn't fit in a roller coaster seat when I was at the theme park near to us, or if some random bully on the school playground would make fun of me or kick me, you know, those sorts of things happen more often than not. Or when I went clothes shopping, because back in the 80s and 90s, there weren't a lot of plus size clothing available. And the ones that were available were shapeless, black, nasty, nothing a, a young girl wants to wear. <laughs> it was very hard to express myself through my clothing. So those were the challenges I had as a kid. And um, it wasn't until I was in college that I wanted to change my life. You know, my pediatrician had been trying to get me to lose weight my entire time seeing her. And being the stubborn, very independent girl I am, I said, you don't know anything about me. I'm fine. I'm doing great. <laughs> Leave me alone. It wasn't until college that I said, well, I need to make a change. And instead of it being a circumstance of, I call them trigger events, and you may have heard that term before. It, my trigger event wasn't something bad that happened to me. It was my grandmother passing away. And um, Grandma Espinosa was a very big role model to me. She was a very dy dynamic woman and very hard to say no to. And she had struggled with heart disease for quite a while. When she passed away just before I graduated college, I, um, I realized, you know, I took a long, hard look at my life and the trajectory of where I was going with my life. And despite being overall healthy and very active, I was a very active kid. I was still gaining weight every year like, you know, five, 10 pounds, which doesn't seem like a lot, but if it's consistently happening over time, I realized I was not on the right path and I may not live to be old enough to have my own children, or I may not be able to be as physically active as I wanted to be and have continued to be since that point. So I took a year to really get control of what I was doing, how I was eating, how I was moving. And in that one year without any support, any shakes or supplements, I lost 100 pounds. So that's how my story began. That was my before story, I guess, if you want to call it that. What's unique about my business as a motivational speaker is while I share this story, it's not that it's wrong to be obese because I don't believe it is. And obese people tend to outlive people who are not obese. Um, it's more the lines of you should feel amazing in your own skin, no matter what size or shape or age you are. And if you don't, I can help you with that. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing that story. It's it's really inspirational. And, um, you know, just as like a side note, like, you know, 
personally when I'm, my business story starts as a kid as well and so like I really resonate with you on that level like how connected and um huge our, the the impact of our childhood and, and beyond takes us into our into our lives you know um and I really love that you are really focusing on you know whatever size shape you are that is healthy that is that is good and I think that that is so necessary and needed in our society and so just thank you for um being that role model to to people out out there everywhere um so thanks um so this interview today is all about like morning rituals morning routine and you know I would love for you to just go over just um really quickly for anyone that you know even has a morning routine or doesn't like what is the importance of having one? Oh, I love talking about this subject I can talk about it all day long so wh what's the importance of morning routines let's get into that first because I know not everyone listening is a, a, an early bird or a morning person. Mornings are difficult for many people. Um, and, you know, I'm not immune to that. I haven't always been a morning person. But the importance of morning routines, and, and I like to include morning plus routine, because it's not just about being up at 5 a.m. every morning. It's about having a routine once you get up. And I know, Becca, you can appreciate the importance of that. But I'll talk a little bit about why the morning in particular. Um, there was a, a Forbes study or article that came out and they studied the habits of Fortune 500 leaders. I think up to 500 of them, 500 Fortune 500 leaders. And what was found to be common amongst these leaders was they um, accomplished a number of very specific prioritized tasks by 7 a.m. each morning. And so, you know, that is quite compelling. So regardless of whether you're leading a company creating your own business or you have big goals in your life. I'm assuming if you're watching this show, you have some goals in your life. Um, you can really leverage those early morning hours because research does show that people who do that are more successful, more productive, and especially when they combine it with a routine, there's an important set of rituals there that can help you center and ground yourself to have the best, most productive, and because I talk about health, it's also the healthiest day because you're setting the tone for the rest of your day and setting the tone is the really crucial piece of it. Yeah, I love that. And um, okay, so like someone like me, I am an early bird, but like a 6.30, 7 a.m. early bird. And like my morning routine is like shower, brush teeth, do all like that hygiene stuff. And then I'm like, all right, I need to work. Like I'm ready to go. Um, I like to decompress after work. So that's when I move my body. That's when I, you know, um, meditate, yo do yoga, whatever, you know, that is after work. But like, what would you say to someone that's like, no, I, I, I just want to go straight to work. Like, what are, what are the pros and cons, I guess, of that? Yeah, well, that's an interesting question you bring up because, you know, different people resonate with different structures and routines and schedules, especially depending on what their life situation is. Um, I work with a lot of moms and women who have children or young children, and um, that means that their children probably tend to wake them up before they're ready to be awake for their day. <laughs> um, so sometimes, you know, utilizing those really early morning hours before the children wake you up is even more critical for you as a self-care routine as a mom. But um, I personally don't like to utilize my early morning hours for work, and here's why. Um, this is based on some of the research off of Hal Elrod, who wrote The Miracle Morning, which is an international selling um, bestseller book. And he has versions for you know, salespeople, for moms, for everyone from every walk of life. And he came up with some rituals. Now, these rituals, I do a spin off of them. So I have some of my own rituals that I feel are very important to do. Um, when I talk about the early morning routine, I mean within that first hour after you get up. So you mentioned, Becca, that you have some hygienic things that you take care of, and I suspect most people do that. They brush their teeth, they shower, they kind of, you know, get physically ready for the day. But if you can utilize some of those self-care practices in the morning, which is what I tend to do, and the rituals we'll talk about more, that sets the tone, like I said. It sets the intention. It sets the mindset that you're going to be in so that you have better decision-making capabilities so that you can be ready when your children climb all over you. You can be ready when those fires start happening as early as, you know, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., whatever that looks like for your life. 
So setting a self-care routine and um, some habits that will benefit you and also make you feel like you are an independent individual with value and worth, regardless of what your role or your station in life is. Many of us respond to the things in our life. We're reacting all day long. So that first hour after you get up, if you can stop reacting and be proactive about how you want that day to go, about setting that stage for that day, um, there is research to show that doing that within the first hour after you get up, sure, it's fine to spend time you know, brushing your teeth and all those things, those will happen. But if you have another 45 minutes to spend, and that's what I'm suggesting here, I'm not suggesting that you spend hours just focusing on you, that's not realistic. But if you have 45 minutes, and these rituals can be done in five minute chunks at a time, um, there's a whole strategy you can use to implement them. It doesn't take a lot of time. It just takes the right uh, mindset to say, I'm worth it. And this is going to be the way for me to show up the best way I possibly can today. Yeah, I love that. Um, so, you know, obviously it's not black and white and it's not like either or, you know, some mornings you can do it, some mornings you can't. And, you know, I always emphasize that it's not just like all or nothing. Like it, it can be both. Um, and so... Yeah, like I think it's important, you know, as a time management coach, obviously, like putting the time blocks in your calendar, that's like kind of just like normal, everyday knowledge. But like, how would how do you recommend your clients to actually like go through with it and like, actually follow through with their time blocks for their morning ritual? Yeah, so important um, when I work with clients, the importance of flexibility and adaptability is always a piece of it because you never know what's going to happen. You know, none of us could have predicted COVID-19 and all these other changes to our daily life. So I encourage people to set themes and to set uh, minimum expectations. So for example, I'm going to be talking about specifically five rituals, but if you are in a situation where maybe you sleep in a little bit later than usual, it's going to happen. You know, committing to the minimum rituals that you personally have found to be most um, energizing and helpful for you can be the bare minimum, if you will, of what you need to really feel good for that day. Or if something else shows up in your life, like it, it tends to happen, sometimes your rituals will change or the order in which you do them will change, which is what you need. So being flexible and adaptable, both to your own needs and to the needs of the people that you have in your life is very important. So I'm not someone who should say, you know, who's gonna tell anyone, okay, it's eight o'clock, you need to do this. It's 10 o'clock, you need to do this. I never schedule by the hour. Instead, I focus on chunks of days. For example, early a.m. is my time. You know, after that is kid time. And then, you know, afternoon is family time. And then after that, so I'm very clear about, I even if I don't block it out on my calendar, because I don't always do that, but I know every day before I wake up approximately how my day will flow. And I have that abil ability to flex depending on if something comes up, if my child needs a ride somewhere, if my husband needs me to support him in some way, then I can shift, I can just shift the block of time that I'm dedicating to towards certain practices. But one thing that is always consistent for me is that early morning time for just me. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom there. Um, okay, so let's just get into it. What are your five uh, morning, blah, five morning rituals? <laughs> <laughs> Happy to share those. So I, I mentioned a little bit about um, why it's not just the morning that's important and that first hour after you wake up, no matter what time that looks like for you. You know, I'm not trying to make you an early bird if you're not an early bird, but that first hour is really the key time. And I mentioned them as rituals. They're not just habits. They're not just actions or things you do. So what's the difference between a habit or an action and a ritual? A ritual is something that builds upon itself and it is a subconscious autonomous, like it, it'll happen on its own eventually. So it is a habit. However, there is a meaning associated with it. A ritual um, builds upon a tradition, either your own tradition, a tradition that you can nod to from your family or your past, or even um, just a deeper meaning towards it. So for example, if you light incense every morning as you're praying, then that's a ritual. Like you could light incense any time of day, but if you're doing it during the morning, then there's a certain significance to that. So rituals have a significance. It's not just about taking action. It's about taking the right action and finding the right order of those actions to have significance for you. 
So I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there because some of these will have significance for you when I say them right away and some of them won't. So let the ones that are significant to you float to the top and focus your energies on those and the others, if they're intriguing to you, we can explore those more. Uh, so let's launch into the five. And again, these are adapted from Miracle Morning and some of them are mine. So ones that I feel are specific to health and wellness purposes because not all of these are automatically anyway. So let's go with the first one, which is reading. And this is in no particular order, as I said, you know, some of these are important to some people versus others. So I'm a lifelong reader. And when I heard you should read something every morning, I'm like, well, duh, you know, <laughs> why wouldn't I be reading something every morning? I read like five books a week. So that's just comfortable and easy and fun for me. But I know that a lot of people struggle with this. And when we talk about reading, it can be anything of your choosing. So I'm not going to tell anyone what they need to read. I mean, we can suggest things, but it's something that's enjoyable for you. What a lot of people tend to do is they wake up, they get on their phone and they read the news or what's latest and greatest in their industry or something that may not be positive <laughs> and may not be very encouraging. So I would encourage you to step away from those types of habits because while it's good to stay informed, it's also good for you to pay attention to those things which fuel and energize you, especially the first thing when you wake up in the morning. So I highly, yeah. <laughs> Raise my hand. Um, so wait, is it okay if it's on your email, if you know it's gonna be positive? In or are general? you saying just no technology? Like in the morning, like, so for example, I get an email that's like notes from the universe. I don't know if you've ever seen that email, but like every day it sends out this like super short, um, like encouragement, letter of encouragement from the universe. So like, would that count as something that you would read? Or are you talking about like, you know, a, an article or a fiction book or, you know, what, like, it, that's my question. <laughs> <laughs> Notes from the universe is actually very, very cool because it, it taps into your belief system and things that are encouraging and positive for you. And doing it on email is fine. I discourage people from reaching for their phone first thing in the morning um, for a couple of reasons, because you can get lost in the black hole of whatever apps are on your phone, and it might take you longer than the five minutes you need to really set the tone for your day. Um, so something that's short, that's encouraging, that's positive, it can be on your email, as long as you are conscious of is that going to make you spend an hour and a half looking at your the rest of your emails and responding to fires? We want to avoid those kinds of things. We want to avoid the reactive piece of it. So if you're really good at you know segmenting and siloing information and saying, okay, I'm just going to look at this one and I'm going to put the rest of it away, then that's good. Um, my particular struggle with reading, especially in the morning, is to stop reading after a certain amount of time because I can literally read a book from cover to cover and lose the whole day. <laughs> so just, you know, if you need to set a timer, if you need to have your next ritual be something that um, kind of lends itself to, for example, if you're reading about notes from the universe and it says, well, you should ground yourself with a meditation, then it's like, oh, great, that will feed into my next ritual. You know, if, if it suggests Perfect. an action step for you, then that's especially helpful to trigger your next ritual. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> So thank you. That was a great question. Um, I know we live in a technology world right now and, um, you know, Kindles, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Some people prefer their devotionals or their prayers in the morning, which also sets a great stage for your day. So, you know, whatever belief system you have, if it feels like it's a supportive thing, then I encourage you to explore that as part of your reading ritual. Beautiful. Love it. <laughs> And then um, number two ritual, again, no particular order, you take them in whatever order feels, makes sense for you, is writing. And a lot of people say, well, I, you know, I work for a company, I don't have any business, I don't have a blog, I'm not a writer, why should I write? Well, there are benefits to writing, and writing doesn't necessarily have to be creative writing. So, you know, put that off the table if you feel or don't identify as a creative person, that's okay. You can write a lot of things. The things that I discourage from writing as part of your morning rituals is please don't write your to-do list. <laughs> you can. I'm a fan. <laughs> um, because to-do lists, I feel, create a sense of overwhelm. 
and to create a sense of all the things left undone, which could pose some judgments for you in terms of <laughs> are you doing what you need to do? We don't want you to get into that space. So, <laughs> right, <laughs> um, if creative writing is not your thing, then focus on your goals or focus on um, what type of feelings you want to invoke for that day. So for example, take a piece of paper, a pen. You can do this electronically, but I encourage you to have that physical connection with a, a writing instrument because I feel that art is getting lost and there is greater benefit of physically writing your goals down, especially people who write their goals down are 40% more likely to achieve them. Even if you never look at that goal again, it has yep. been written down, you have made it physical. You've basically created a pathway for that to be true for you. So very important to use a physical instrument when you're writing things down. Like I said, you know, goals, you could say, well, my goal for today is to smile throughout every moment. You know, it could be anything. Just, you could even write stream of consciousness, for example, um, remembering what you dreamed about last night, if you remember your dreams. You can write about something you were grateful for from the previous day, something you're grateful for today, even not knowing whether it's gonna happen. It, you may speak it into existence, you never know. But just writing things that feel good to you. So for me, it might be goal setting. I journal almost every day. I usually respond to a prompt because I like to um, engage different parts of my creativity. So for me, you know, if it's not writing for my blog at Weightless Chronicles, then I might do something else. I might respond to a prompt. That is not something I would normally respond to. Uh, I write a lot. And when I stopped getting out of the habit of writing, writing is when I realized it is so critical. It is just such an important piece of being a human being. I mean, that's kind of what distinguishes us from a lot of the animal kingdom is we can write, we can think creatively, we can think outside of the box and we can set down that legacy through writing. So even if you only spend five minutes of just, this is what I dreamed last night, this is what I hope for today, it'll make you feel so much better when you start your day. And um, if you choose to, you can look back at those things you wrote down as well and be surprised maybe by the end of the day like this is really how it turned out today and I'm so glad that I wrote that down yeah yeah I'm a huge fan of journaling I journal like all the time it's why it's just yeah <laughs> and then for people who are business owners I'm guessing you have a lot of ideas popping around in your head and maybe all hours of the day so putting those ideas down on paper at least you can kind of sort physically instead of mentally because we have so many thoughts every day some of those thoughts are worthy of being on paper, others are not, but until you get it down on paper, it's really hard to kind of filter through them. So th that can be a helpful resource as well, just writing out all the things. And I don't mean the to-dos, I mean the ideas, like yeah. I'm gonna create this movement, you know, the big ideas that you're afraid to speak out loud, but you can certainly write them down and examine them. Yep, I love that, that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And then um, the third, the third um, ritual, which I used to be anti this ritual because it's a challenge for me <laughs> as a go-getting person and a very action-oriented person. Meditation is the third one. So meditation is, the good news is meditation doesn't have to have any spiritual component if you don't consider yourself a spiritual person. You don't have to be a yogi to do meditation. I used to have these ideas of, oh, meditation means I sit with my legs crossed and my arms up and I'm, mm, and my eyes are closed. You know, there are a lot of impressions of what meditation is and it doesn't have to be that way. So if you're a person who was like me, a hater, <laughs> not a hater, just didn't get it. I right? didn't connect with it. <laughs> uh, there, are, there is a meditation for you. And for meditation, I think what people struggle with a lot is the stillness, right? The being still, the getting down into your body, the like being aware and present with yourself. We don't often do that. Even focusing on your breathing, like breathing is something unconscious that we do without thinking until we can't breathe. And then we get thrust, flustered and confused, like, oh my God, why is this not happening naturally? But when we intentionally use our breath, we are fueling our body and our creativity and our mind in a different way. So some of the things that have worked really well for me in terms of meditation are going down a path. So guided visualization is really important for me. I like to tap into themes and just about everything in my life. 
life. So a lot of the meditations I do are around the moon phases or mm -hmm. the elements like air, fire, water, and earth. You know, um, I plan according to lunar phases and what element the moon is transiting. So it's kind of fun. I make it a whole thing. It's kind of like a story. And then I have meditations that follow that. I also have meditations for running. So if I'm out on the trail and I'm running, there might be a meditation that will ask me to be very present and aware of my breath or present and aware of my feet hitting the pavement. So you do not have to be still when you're meditating. You can certainly do a walking or a running meditation if that fuels you and feels good to you. And if sitting still is a struggle, or you could do something that um, has certain music beats like binaural beats is helpful or whale song or sounds of nature might be something that really energize you and, and something that you can connect to. So again, finding the significance of a meditative practice that suits you. If you're not a still person and you don't like to be still, even in the morning, I get it, I understand. But know that there are millions of different ways to meditate and you can start with one or two minutes a day, even if you want to. And you don't have to listen to anything. You don't have to download an app if you don't want to. You can certainly just sit outside with your eyes closed and be in the moment, which is difficult to do without guidance if you're just starting out, but you can certainly find a meditative practice. And the benefits of meditation, I'm, I'm sure your audience knows this well, but you know, you are able to tap into your flow, into your creativity. You are able to cultivate appreciation and gratitude. And especially when we're in troubled times or don't know what the future holds, it can be even more challenging to deal with stress and overwhelm. And meditation is the number one way to help you do that. So even if it's a struggle for you, know that that struggle can be overcome over time, especially if you include it as part of your morning rituals. Yeah, yeah. You know, when COVID first happened, like back in March, um, you know, it, speaking back to what you talked about earlier, which is like it changes with the seasons and with, with the external stuff and internal stuff going on. And um, I'm a yoga teacher, meditation teacher. And, you know, when COVID happened, I was like, oh my God, I can't do that. Like, I, I, like I was kind of in shock. Right. And um, so I got into running like everybody else and their mother did. Um, yes. But it was like a meditation, right? It was, it's a moving meditation. And I think that, um, you know, when you are flexible and adaptable, it's like what's going on and just respond intuitively majority of the time. But um, it's really, really helpful to be flexible and intuitive and, you know, the other thing that I'll say about meditation, you know, a lot of my clients are like, how do you stay focused? How do you stay in, um, in one task at a time, especially as an entrepreneur, like you have a million, like you said, a million ideas and like, you know, you want to be able to do all these beautiful things. So it's amazing, but like you have to stay focused on one to actually accomplish it. Um, and so I like, I would credit my meditation practice, my yoga practice to that ability to be able to actually follow through with a small task, a big task, like whatever it is, my ability to focus in the moment on the thing that I'm working on. So that's what I'll add as another benefit to doing this morning ritual. <laughs> <laughs> the meditation is, is a really interesting one. I know people who can spend hours meditating, which I am definitely not at that place. Like personally, I don't know if I'll ever get there. But um, the good news is you can't mess up meditation whatever way you choose to do it and you complete it, you haven't failed. Like if you're not doing it wrong. You're just doing, you're finding your way. You're finding what works for you. And that's what you have to do with any of these rituals. You have to find what yeah. works for you. So in the beginning, there might be a lot of overwhelm and ideas and, oh my God, I don't even know where to start. If you feel overwhelmed, reach out to people who can support you. You know, Becca can help you with your meditative practice and your yoga movements. And I can help you with understanding how to prioritize and how to get those things in the right order for you. And, you know, there are lots of places you can go to find um, information on how to get started. It's an easy thing. Once you get past the, it's not for me. If you have yourself in the identity of, I'm not a meditator or I don't meditate, then you won't. So being open to starting something new and being open to challenging yourself during that process. Yeah, I love it. All right, let's get to these last two. <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right, so of course I have to put some that are relating to health and wellness more directly. Meditation is very helpful for your health and wellness in terms of stress relief and other things like creativity and ability to focus. But these next two are directly responsible for helping you with your overall health and wellness. So exercise is something that is 
so critical. And um, I love exercise. I've been active my entire life. But there are benefits to exercising first thing in the morning because you have not been eating all night. You are in a fasting state. So depending on what kind of exercise you are going to partake in, and it should always be fun for you or somewhat fun. <laughs> so throwing that disclaimer in there, don't do something you hate to do because you're definitely not going to become a morning person if you hate that exercise that you've scheduled for yourself. Mm -hmm. So be aware of that. <laughs> there's no wrong way to exercise, just like there's no wrong way to meditate. But depending on what kind of exercise you do, like if you do cardio in the morning, your calorie burn might be better. You might find it easier to do the cardio in the morning because you don't have food in your stomach and you won't get sick. You won't get cramps. You won't have those experiences. Um, if you do weight training or something more intense in the morning, that might be better for you too, especially during the summer months. If you tend to get really warm when you're exercising or you're doing it very intensely, then the more early morning hours are the coolest time to do it, the most relaxed time to do it. There's less pressure on you. Um, it's not the middle of the day when you're ready for a nap. So there are certainly benefits to getting your exercise done in the morning. And um, exercise is obviously critical to a lot of things, but it has more to do with improving your mood. So a lot of people have been dealing with some mental health related concerns during COVID and who knows how far into the future this will continue. But you can automatically improve your mood with just 15 minutes worth of exercise, even if that means just taking a walk outside. So, you know, with so many benefits to exercise, not just physical, but also the understanding that it improves your mood, sometimes better than a piece of chocolate can, you know, is making sure you get some movement in there. We are designed as humans to move. And even if that movement doesn't mean you're like getting really sweaty and you're getting those washboard abs, it doesn't have to be that type of movement. You can stretch for five or 10 minutes. And for a lot of people, you know, morning is the best time to stretch because you're not going to do it uh, during the rest of the day, right? Who stretches in the middle of the day or post lunch or pre lunch or whatever? Oh, you do. <laughs> That's great. Maybe you can walk us through that. <laughs> That's like the worst time of the day for me is the afternoon, like between three and five. It's, I'm just done. I'm tapped out yeah. uh, because I wake up at 5.30 most mornings. But, <laughs> um, but if I know I'm going to exercise first thing in the morning, especially as a mom who is on the go and have a lot of scheduled activities during the day, I know I'm done. I'm done with my exercise. And any other activity I do during the day with my children, like we go biking, we go to the parks, we go swimming, is bonus. It's a bonus thing. So I'm excited about moving, but at least in the morning, if I don't have those other activities, I took care of myself. You know, I got my oxygen going. I chose a healthier breakfast because I exercised. So that is why exercise in the morning for me is like a win-win situation. Love that. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course the final piece, which like I said, these rituals might build upon each other, and certainly this one does as well. Eat a healthy breakfast is number five. Make sure you fuel yourself appropriately. And um, this is interesting because in the health and wellness world, there's a lot of people who talk about intermittent fasting as the latest thing, the latest and greatest thing. You know, don't eat between the hours of 10 p.m. at night and, and 10 a.m. in the morning or whatever. You know, um, fasting is not new. There are many religions who've been doing it for thousands of years and it has been a regular part of their practice. However, they were doing it for other reasons than health. And um, I do believe personally, having read a lot of research on this, that intermittent fasting can be beneficial to a certain segment of people, but for very specific needs. And I do feel it's an advanced technique. So I highly encourage all of my clients to eat a healthy breakfast because one of the things that's really important in terms of those who have a, a weight loss focus, if they're like, I need to lose some weight, I gained 10, 15 pounds, I need to lose some weight. As a member of the National Weight Control Registry, which is a registry of thousands of people who have maintained a weight loss of at least 30 pounds over time. For me, it's been 20 years since I lost 100 pounds. So I've been able to maintain it. And one of the reasons why is because I always eat a healthy breakfast. Like if I don't start my day with a good breakfast, it's not a good day for me. And my family knows, my, my kids know. <laughs> I'm just a dragon in the morning if I don't get that healthy breakfast. And um, you know, not everyone eats breakfast, I understand. But the importance of breaking the fast and, um, is, cannot be understated, especially if you use some of these other rituals 
if you are exercising in the morning but you don't eat till lunch, chances are good that you're eating foods that you wouldn't normally eat because you're hungry and you're making up for those lost calories. Your body needs the fuel. Uh, there's importance to making sure you eat a healthy breakfast. And up to 85% of the people who maintain weight loss over time. So if that's important to you, maintaining your weight over time, which I'm guessing most of us have that as a concern, is uh, eating a healthy breakfast every day. And when it comes to breakfast and when it comes to meal planning in general, I always encourage my clients to use a macro nutrient based formula. And formula sounds complicated. It's really not that complicated. <laughs> All the foods we eat are either protein, fat, or carbs. And by that, I mean, that's how our body processes it when we're eating it. So it's, it's not necessarily the calorie, like everyone's like, it's calories in versus calories out. No. It's the building blocks of what's in the food you're eating and how your body tends to digest it. So protein has the lowest calories per serving, which is why a lot of people tend to focus on high protein diets. Fat has the most calories per serving, which is why low fat was a thing back in the 80s and 90s. However, what's not important is those individual pieces of the, you know, what's in food, but how you balance those pieces together. So when it comes to building a healthy meal, for me and for my clients, that means you eat a combo of protein, fat, and carbs every time you eat, including your breakfast. And I have a free resource called the Breakfast Blueprint. Instead of telling you what you can't eat, it can tell you all the different amazing things you can eat based on the macros of what's in those foods. So if that's of interest to you, I'm happy to provide you the link to that. It's a one-page downloadable resource down below this video. <laughs> And those are the five morning rituals. Like I said, um, the order in which you do these rituals is important to you. And you determine what that looks like. I'm not going to tell you in what order to do these. Uh, I will tell you that my minimum three are the same no matter what the day looks like. So at a minimum, personally, I always exercise, meditate, and write. And eat, of course. So I guess that's four, but the eating doesn't take me as long. <laughs> that's like a normal thing now. <laughs> it's a normal thing. Yeah. So, um, I mean, everyone's got to eat, right? But I make sure I do either meditation or exercise every morning when I wake up. It's either or because I have a schedule for exercise and I schedule that out in advance. Mm -hmm. So the meditation fits in between those things, unless I'm that. feeling called to add it in. And I'll do that sometimes, but yeah. you personally have to let float to the top what resonates the most with you. So if you're like, yeah, meditation is hard for me, don't start with meditation. Start with the easiest one for you. Whatever, whatever one that is, the easiest one, you start with that and let the others flow naturally from there. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. So much wisdom, so much knowledge. Um, I'm really excited about all of those things. And um, I'll be contacting you shortly when I upgrade my morning routine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I jazz out on these things. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So if anyone wanted to learn more about you and um, potentially work with you, where would they find you? You can find me online at Weightless Chronicles, not weight loss, weightlesschronicles.com. And also all my social media links are there. I'm on the gram, I'm on YouTube, I'm in all the places. So you can find me anywhere that feels comfortable for you. And again, I have a lot of free downloadable resources, including the fl breakfast blueprint that I talked about today. But I also have other things related to mindset work. So if uh, you've been on a health journey and it's not panning out the way you'd like, I have an e-course called Five Days to Body Bliss. It helps you figure out your mindset and your perspectives around your body and how you can shift that perspective to be more loving and encouraging to yourself. I love that. Oh my gosh. Yes, I'm totally so needed. Um, well, awesome. Thank you so much for all of the wisdom that you shared. And I'm really glad to have you on the show today. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or Jen about any of this. We're more than happy to answer any of your questions and we'll see you later. Absolutely. Have a great morning, everyone. Thanks.